Battleaxe began life as a Kickstarter campaign created by pixel game artist Henk Nyborg. It's a top-down hack and slash game with a fantasy setting inspired by the arcade classics of the 80s and 90s, with 1985's Gauntlet listed as a main source of inspiration. Is this battle worth taking or should you give it the axe? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now let's find out. Turn peace to this world. Discover weapons. Items and artifacts. So story-wise we have a tale of an evil sorceress who every seven years demands that the nearby towns make an offering to her of some of its inhabitants who will then be subjected to a life of slavery. The inhabitants of the said towns have had enough of this so and put a call out for heroes to come and save them and three such heroes step forward to save the day. This is shown via a very brief cutscene at the beginning of the game, and whilst it doesn't delve into the exact details much at all, it does harken back to classic arcade game intros of old, which would have played when the cabinets were in attract mode. In terms of gameplay, while well, speaking of arcade games, this is a modern interpretation of the classic hack and slash games. The action takes place from a top down perspective, with your chosen character having free attacks at their disposal as they attempt to take out the number of enemies thrown at you. First you have your standard attack performed by pressing B, then you have a more powerful dash attack assigned to Y, and you also have a projectile by pressing A. The latter two moves are tied to a stamina bar which limits constant use of the moves, thus calling for you to use your free moves strategically if you do not want to find yourself in a tight spot. The three characters all handle differently, for example one may be faster but have a slower projectile, whereas another may be slower but has more health. There is definitely enough between them to make experimentation with them worthwhile, and no doubt you will find a favourite that works for your playstyle. Initially, Battle Axe reminded me most of arcade games such as Wizard Fire or Gate of Doom, with some definite shades of gauntlet thrown in for good measure. And whilst there is still something to that, the game it ended up reminding me most of was ironically a console game, that being Zombies or Zombies Ain't My Neighbours as it's most commonly known. The reason for this is the level layouts, which whilst mainly linear, contain a few dead ends or raised parts which must be accessed by finding stairs or bridges and by the fact that placed within each level are a set number of characters that need rescuing by you walking over them, usually hidden in the aforementioned dead ends and raised areas. Defeated enemies grant you points which will go towards your score and you will be graded at the end of each stage. This will be posted onto leaderboards when you get a game over, although only local leaderboards are available which is a shame. As well as points, gold can be collected throughout the levels and this can be spent whenever you come across the merchant, sometimes found within levels, but usually at the end of a stage. She sells a variety of items such as meat to replenish health, or magic spells that will defeat all enemies on the screen at once, and one of these can be stored to use at a later time. There are further items that can be bought for a higher price, but this brings me on to one of the issues I have with the game, and that is that it doesn't actually tell you what these items do. You need to buy them and just try them out, but even then it's not always overly apparent what the effect of the item was. Most enemies go down with one or two hits, bar a few that take a few more, such as those stationed on these towers, and at times enemies will need to be taken out in order to deactivate particular energy shields and move further into levels, and at the end of each level is a boss battle. These are fairly straightforward, with pattern memorization being the name of the game, although they will no doubt be a cause of a fair few deaths whilst you learn these patterns. Talking of deaths then, and you have a set number of lives and no continues. Once the lives are gone, it's game over and you try again. Whilst the game can be beaten in about 30 to 40 minutes, there are only four levels after all, most people will see the game over screen a good few times before they manage to see the ending. Once you have beaten the game, a new game plus mode is unlocked, which flips the levels on their head, kind of like a mirror image of the originals, and changes up the bosses to a degree. You can play through the game in two player co-op, and I very much enjoyed this, although it is local only, and it's a shame that as with the leaderboards, online play was not implemented, or even a free player mode to make full use of the character roster. It's also a shame that there is no drop in drop out system for the local co-op. Finally, there is an infinite mode where the enemies constantly respawn until your lives are gone and then again you post your highest score. The gameplay is a lot of fun, it genuinely feels like a lost relic of the arcade era with that high difficulty, simple pick up and play concept, yet compelling gameplay loop. I really did like the intense nature of things and switching between moves in order to mow down the hordes of enemies really does feel great. A few minor annoyances such as the lack of labelling with shop items and enemies that can spawn exactly where you are standing are present but on the whole gameplay gets 16 out of 20. 
Controls are simple to learn and perfectly serviceable, although hitting enemies on the diagonal can be a bit awkward, especially with your ranged weapon, and they also score 16 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, Henk Nyborg was responsible for the pixel art himself. Nyborg is a stalwart of the industry whose work ranges from Lionheart on the Amiga to the misadventures of Flink on the Mega Drive, Shantae Risky's Revenge, and more recently the excellent Shakedown Hawaii and Xeno Crisis. In short, the pixel art is absolutely stellar and encapsulates the look and feel of a 90s arcade game. The top-down view assists with this as it gives you a view stretching far off into the distance as you reach the top of the screen, and the use of colour just knits everything together wonderfully. The chunky character sprites are beautifully drawn and well animated, and there's some nice variety in the enemy designs. On a more negative note, there were some instances of performance issues, although I must say I only actually came across these in level 3, which was quite strange. At these times it became quite juttery for want of a better word, which could be quite disorienting. It's strange because for the most part the rest of the game ran flawlessly, even when there were lots of enemies on screen. Moving on to the audio then, and in some respects it's a similar story. The music was created by video game composer Manami Matsume, whose portfolio includes soundtracks for games such as Mega Man, Final Fight, Mercs, Shovel Knight, and even a guilty pleasure from my childhood I've just found out, and that's Vegas Stakes. The tracks are quality throughout, and again, scream arcade, especially with the sound bites, which are few and far between, but add that nice, subtle layer of cheese needed in such a venture. Visuals are a delight to watch, and it's a shame that there are a few performance issues that do taint the experience to a degree, but they score 18 out of 20. Audio is just as impressive and really sells the modern arcade experience, and they also score 18 out of 20. Battle Axe costs £24.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now this is going to be the most contentious issue with regards to this game, by quite a way I would say. On the one hand, it does have only four levels and can technically be beaten in about half an hour, but I would say a more realistic time when you factor in failed attempts would probably be around the two to four hour mark. Now this is still obviously quite a small amount of time for the price being asked, and if you subscribe to the school of thought that games should provide you with about an hour's play time for each pound you've spent, then you're best off steering clear of this one. There is the two player mode, albeit local only, and a new game plus mode to consider, plus some basic in-game achievements, and of course the production values themselves are very high, but with as much good as there is to say about this game, they've still got the pricing quite horribly wrong I think, and for me, unfortunately, value scores 8 out of 20. To conclude, Battle Axe is a fun, challenging and enjoyable experience. It offers fast paced combat and big boss battles wrapped in a beautiful pixel based art style and a fine musical score. It is a shame that the brief runtime of the arcade games it tries to emulate couldn't have been extended into a fully fleshed game more in line with that expected on home consoles and the price being asked does not correlate with such an experience these days. Had this game been two levels longer, added online multiplayer and just ironed out a few little other kinks, it would have been an immediate recommendation. As it is though, it's a very fun game that fans of arcade experiences will love, but it is just too expensive. My advice would be to go in with your eyes wide open as to how much game time you're going to get, or perhaps stick it on the wishlist and wait for a sale, or keep an eye on the physical version which may well drop in price in the coming months. Battle Axe gets a switch up score of 76%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.